What's going on guys? This is going to be another video on mnemonics and tips and advice for psychology and sociology. I have already made videos on biology, biochemistry, and chemistry physics. So this is my last little segment of that series for psychology and sociology. Just a quick disclaimer, all these acronyms, they're not all mine. A lot of them I have gotten from different videos that I watched when I was studying from my MCAT. Some are also from the Reddit thread for MCAT and pre-med. Some are also from different Anki decks that have been floating around in Reddit mostly. With that being said, I hope you find this useful. And if you do, please like, share, and subscribe. That will truly help me out. So without any further ado, let's just get started. So first one, how to know or how to memorize parvocellular pathway versus magnum cellular so for parvo it starts with a p so a think of p for pink pyramid and for a pink pyramid it is more about the spatial resolution and you can think about the boundaries and shape and the high levels of details and color and it is poor temporal next magnocellular so m for motion and this one has high temporal resolution. So think time and motion like it says here. So it is kind of the opposite of parvocellular. So again, P, pink pyramid, and M, motion, magnocellular. Next is role strain. So the way I think of role strain versus role conflict is role strain has this in, I-N. So you are in one role and you're having many competing obligations within that one role. So for example, if you are a student, you have to write two papers, reading assignments, a speech, and lab report so you have one role which is a student and in that role you have many competing obligations opposite of that is role conflict so really if you just know in for strain then the other role something is role conflict top-down processing so what is up top is your head and your head has many many different kinds of knowledge if you're using top-down processing you're using background knowledge from your head which will influence your perception and that is the opposite of bottom-up processing where it begins with a stimulus so it is just the opposite of top-down processing so another one that I was getting always mixed up is retrograde amnesia versus interrogate Retrograde is in the past. So whatever is retrograde, whatever is in the past, you cannot recall it. You can form new memories, but you cannot bring back what happened in the past. That is a retrograde, it happened in the past. Anterograde is what's in front of you. So you cannot make any new memories because it is in front of you. But you can recall old memories. Next, all these different kinds of vision. Photo pick, a photo is usually bright, so a photo pick vision occurs at levels of highlight levels. Meso pick, it happens at dawn or dusk, and the way that I remember it is that it's morning. So in the morning, it's dawn, right? And the same kind of light level in the morning is similar to what's at dusk in the evening, so M for morning. Then scotopic, I just I think about a scope as in nods because nods have scopes. And what is a nod? Nod is a night operating device. So scotopic, just think of it as scope, nods, and you need nods for very low light or right? like a nighttime. The difference between opiates and opioids, so one is natural and one is synthetic. And the way that I think of it is that A comes before O and the natural ones were had to be discovered first for them to mimic it to make it synthetic. So A before O. Johnson and Hines, it's about the information attenuator and it just talks about how the attenuator can be anywhere. So the acronym is Johnson and Johnson and Hines ketchup can be anywhere because if you think about it, that's true. Next is Hans Eisenk, I think that's how you say it, and he's all about traits. And his three big ones are psychoticism, extroversion versus introversion, and neuroticism. So the way you should memorize it is pen, and that is Eisenk's pen, P-E. And Bandura's social cognitive theory, tension, memory, imitation, motivation, and just know that by M I motivated. So A M M I motivated. Right. Anosmia is inability to perceive odor. So NOS, nose, smell, that's pretty self-explanatory. 
agraphia think of g as a gel pen so cannot write a just means you know unable to or anti anomia so the n stands for name so you cannot name things right that's a pretty easy one as well all right reflexes have two parts afferent versus efferent so the way I think of it is that A is before E. A stimulus has to happen first for it to warrant a response. So afferent comes first, so that is a stimulus. And E is a response because E stands for exit. And once you get a stimulus, the response is the exit from the body. For sleep cycles, N1 stage, it is dominated by theta waves. And the way I think of it is N1T, stage one, no one there. N1T, theta, no one there. Now for me, the I versus the me, I think of it as I is in. So what is inside me? That is like I. And me is the social self. It is the surface self to everybody else. But I, what is inside me is the response to myself. Hunger hormone, I just think of ghrelin as the sound grr because when you're hungry, your stomach goes grr. So grr right here, ghrelin. All right, mnemonic for monocular cues, shit er. So <laughs> that's an easy one. Next, the factor model, the big five personality traits. Just know this acronym OCEAN. Openness, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism. Next, the different brain waves oscillations. So beta, alpha, theta, delta. So badass, that dude. That's how I remember it. And it's in the order from the highest frequency to the lower frequency. Mania, acronym is dig fast, and it stands for all of these. Now for the auditory anatomy. So you got the malleus, incus, and stapes, and they're also called respectively hammer, anvil, and stirrup. So it's miss, right? M I S, has. So I remember it as mishap, mushas, mishap. Then Abram Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So these are the five levels of the hierarchy. And the way you can memorize that is please stop liking stupid shit or please safely love or else suffer. Next for the limbic system, what is part of the limbic system? And that is all over here. So the acronym for that is hippo wearing a hat. And that is for a hat hippo right right here. Hippo wearing a hat, that's how you remember it. The actual acronym, sorry, is hat hippo, hypothalamus, amygdala, thalamus, and hippocampus. This is from Khan Academy actually. The four F's of hypothalamus, that is feeding, fighting, flighting, and effing. Next, I'm not gonna read all this, but this is like a good summary of the different kinds of scanning methodologies. So you don't have to Google all of them. You could just take a screenshot of this. So it's MRI versus fMRI versus CT versus PET. Echoic memory versus iconic. This is an easy one. I mean, echoic memory is for hearing. Why? Because echo, that's hearing, right? You hear an echo. You don't watch an echo, so that's hearing. And just the opposite of that is iconic memory. And just know that the duration for echoic memory is four seconds and iconic is one second. And I think that's an easy one to know because we use this all the time. You can recall something that you heard pretty quickly or for much longer than you can for vision. And lastly, in the description box below, I will have a table of all the moral stages. So I found it on Reddit from what I could recall and it's awesome because it just kind of like has everything down like for Sigmund Freud, for Erickson, I can't remember the other ones but it's just good to see everything on one page and you don't have to keep flipping through pages so enjoy I hope this was helpful and if it is please like share and subscribe and I'll try to put out more videos that are helpful thank you